Hey, this is Ben Schwellen, and today we're going to compare the Welsh language to the Cornish language. So let's jump into the video now. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the numbers because that's something you do immediately when you compare languages and you need to know them in any language. And then I'll take you through just a few questions comparing how they are in Welsh and Cornish, how people think about things in terms of asking is really important in any language. Let's go. Just a quick word on these two languages, Welsh and Cornish. Cymraeg is the word for Welsh and Welsh, and Cernuwek is the word for Cornish and Cornish. Notice that K ending and the G ending. That carries through both these languages in many, many words. And these are both Brythonic or British languages of the Celtic family. In the year 577 or so, there was a battle between British and Saxons and the British lost. And so Cornwall, or the Southwestern Peninsula on the whole, was cut off. And so they were forced into a long period of isolation, which these two diverged. I'm not saying one branched off the other. They were both speaking almost Brythonic at this point, but just diverging. They were forced to grow and develop independently of each other at that point. But from this divergence, Cornish came increasingly under the influence of the Saxon language in a way which was not seen in Welsh. So you get even structures of how they shape their words which reflect influence of Saxon in a very almost, well I'd say in a rich way in some cases. Take the word to win in Welsh, ennill, but in Cornish, Gwenya, and that's just attaching that gwa sound that's brythonic to the beginning of a Saxon word, basically, which eventually in English gave winning or to win. You see this all throughout Cornish, but you don't see that so much in Welsh. You do see it sometimes in modern spoken Welsh beginning to happen now in the northwest of our country with an ending words. And I would warn Welsh people that if you take too many words from English, you will become a patois, as was happening to Cornish at the end of it being a living community language. So don't let that happen to you by adopting too many English words. Of course, Welsh and Cornish have gone through very different histories, although having a common root. Cornish, unfortunately, did not make it through completely to the modern era as a living community language. Although efforts are underway to revive it and hopefully they'll re-establish communities where it is a normal everyday language. Welsh did. One thing that makes Welsh and Cornish a bit different is their alphabet and how they convey different sounds, how they write them, the orthography. I found the numbers actually more different than I thought they would be, although they are very, very similar. So look at this. Onan is one, which is quite different for a language this related. But then you get something that's quite unique that I didn't expect is Un, which is basically the same thing as the Welsh one, actually means one specifically before a noun, which Welsh doesn't have anything like that. But then in Two, three, and four, you get something that's quite unique. Gendered two, three, and four. Deo is masculine and Dio is feminine for the number two in Cornish. Tree is masculine and Ter is feminine. 
plus what is four. That's interesting that you have the S. It's interesting that both Welsh and Cornish have the same numbers, which they have dual genders for. It's very suggestive of how close these languages are. They have two daughters. Now the word daughter is feminine in both Welsh and Cornish. So look what it does. The word for daughter is merch in both languages, but spelled slightly differently. And it causes a mutation, it becomes verch in both languages. So in Cornish, imedeva du verch, right? If it was masculine, it would be dau, not du, right? And in Welsh, madu verch gandano, or madu verch gandano. And then peder is the feminine, but in Welsh it's pedair, so there's a bit of a difference in the vowel shift there. And pimp and pimp basically the same. Chwech, that's the, that sound shift I was talking about, that a lot of words in Cornish that in Welsh begin ch, they start in Cornish ch, so there's a bit of loss of the guttural and then not that much difference going into seven, eight, and the same actually for now and day, nine and 10. But 11, I wanna mention this. Just a quick word on the number 11 here is that Welsh doesn't have its own specific word for 11, but Cornish neck does. I find that really special and odd that Welsh doesn't in our egg, one on ten. We have our own word in Welsh for twelve, day egg, as Cornish does as well. I wonder why Welsh didn't do that for eleven though. Hmm. So the numbers are quite similar. Let's go on to questions, actual sentences in these two languages. One you might need to begin off a uh, first conversation with someone is, what is your name? In Welsh, Bethu de Anudi. We add that additional pronoun to the end, even though we already mentioned you. It's quite French that way. But that's another video, perhaps we could compare French and Welsh. In Cornish, Bethu de Hanau. P and B, I mean, it used to be in Welsh, pa beth, which thing? And it was squished together in both of these, but they squished them together differently. But are you? Literally, what hour is it? But in Welsh, we have a completely different way of saying that. Vaintor glochedi. Literally, how much of the bell or clock is it for telling the time? Oh, it's more buoyed. Is there more food? That's Welsh. And in Cornish, is it more booze? And a couple things are happening there. Cornish developed this Z sound, and Welsh doesn't really have that. And also, you notice the D at the end in Welsh and the S in Cornish. That's a change that you see all over the place. But also, I should note, we would tend to say in Welsh, ois muy void, more of a substance. We would add that O, but I didn't want to include that first off because I want to show you how similar they are in asking questions in these two languages in terms of how much or a quantity of something you would have this ois as a sound to begin with. And I'm sorry for those of you who are learning Welsh, but a question you are going to have to deal with over and over again is where do you come from? In Welsh, Obleot in Dold. From where are you coming? And in Cornish, Ableth os to Devithis. And that V sounds interesting because in Welsh it used to be Devold. Oh, a long time ago. 
And so this is the same construct, almost exactly, from where are you coming? So one you might need is, how are you? Just to ask someone commonly like that. In Cornish, Fatla, Guinness. And in Welsh, Shiduti. That's less formal. But if you're being a bit more formal. Fatla Ginnawch. And anyone who speaks Welsh can say that sounds a bit like Ginnawch in Welsh. And it's the exact same thing. Literally in Cornish, how is it with you? And if you have that with translated into Welsh, Ginnachy and Genity is the singular, and that T and S again. There are a lot of words that are false friends or very near equivalents between Welsh and Cornish that when I'm looking at a text in Cornish or hearing like a video of someone speaking, I immediately know it's a broad concept related to that subject in Welsh, but it's not going to be the precise equivalent. One of these interesting ones is the word dewis. In Welsh, it's specifically a choice or choose, choose it, dewis. But in Cornish, it can mean to choose, to pick, or to take. And I've never really heard that used that way in Welsh. Have you? Please let me know. If you like this comparison, Welsh and Cornish, I could easily do more along the same theme, comparing these two languages further, because maybe it's a good way to actually learn these two, especially from my perspective, teaching people Welsh. And if you have an interest in comparing it to another language that's quite similar, it's a good way to learn it and learn how to think in a way that's British or Brythonic rather than an Anglic way of thinking about language. So let me know, would you like more of these kinds of videos for content? And uh, thank you from the heart, Diorchu Galon, to my Patreons who have taken it up to donate to help keep this going. Thank you very much. And if you'd like to join them, please do. As always, Diorch and Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>